Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, it's kind of interesting how the order changed, and I'm here talking about a problem that Mike just presented on solving, so it should be interesting. Um, so my name is Brian Long, and I'm going to spend the next uh, 10 minutes going through uh, an interesting use case um, in analyzing data and how we needed to automate it. And it's really based off of you know, the great Wi-Fi community and how this all happened. Um, so I had the fortunate pleasure uh, this last December to go down to Atlanta and attend uh, Devin Aiken's advanced wireless design class. If you have an opportunity to take it, definitely do it. While, while I was down there, <laughs> while I was down there, uh, Keith was there and had mentioned to me, you know, I, I want a really quick, easy way just to get some simple statistics, just, you know, average data rates, average MCS, and percent retries. And I want to be able to do multiple tests and be able to tune the knobs that I have available to me. So make changes, for example, in data rates, um, power output, and what have you. So in thinking about this in past analysis projects I've worked on, you know, I thought, hey, we could just write a simple script uh, over Wireshark and get some, get, some, uh, get some data. Obviously, being involved with a lot of troubleshooting projects in the past, you know, having to collect a lot of data and automate that analysis is very important because obviously when you're troubleshooting, um, you know, there's a problem and you got to solve it quickly. So we went to the gold standard for accepting any type of requirements and that would be the back of a napkin. So we grabbed a napkin, Pete wrote, uh, Keith wrote out you know, exactly what I just stated. I want to see the average data rates, I want to see average MCS, percent retries, and then I want to run multiple tests. So that kind of gives me the requirements as far as what I would need to do to put that into a script. Oh, and by the way, if we could do this for free, that would be even better. So all the tools that we're looking at here are free tools. Um, obviously, you, there's enterprise tools out there that you can get this information from very easily, but you might not have access to those tools. So I'm just going through some of the things that are possible. So since we wanted to use a free packet capture analysis tool, I, wanted, I went straight to Wireshark. That's my, that's my capture tool of choice. And in the underlings of, of Wireshark, you know on the command line that you can run the t -shark command to capture data and to analyze data. So we said, okay, first, can I select data from a capture without having to go in and manipulate Wireshark and, and set up different display filters and all of that fun stuff? So yes, you can. The, the minus T, capital T flag there, you have the ability to go and select the, uh, say that you want to pull out fields. All right, well, how do I select specific fields? Fortunately, there's the, the lowercase e flag, and you can specify exactly what fields you want to grab. In Wireshark, you can either mouse over a column, and it's going to give you what the field name is, or you can right-click on anything in Wireshark and say, prepare as filter, and you'll get that name as well. Lastly, we wanted some other just very simple things. Wanted to get the column headers, and wanted to get a comma uh, to do a comma-separated value file. So again, all of that was available at the command line. So great. First is our capture tools, Wireshark. But we want to do some automation. I don't want to do one capture at a time. So that's where I came in and used Python and another module called Pandas. So Python is just a clear object-oriented uh, programming language. There are a, a, a ton of tutorials out there for free. Um, you could also sign up for classes on Udemy or other types of, of uh, online uh, courses as well to, to learn Python. Um, the stuff that I did here, not that big of a deal, a couple hours of learning and you're ready to go. Pandas is an open source library module specifically geared toward high efficient data analysis and data structures. So that worked out very well in working with performing all the calculations over the columns that, that Keith wanted. All right. So I'm not going to go through all the code, but this is just a sample um, of basically using the T-shark command in Python, calling using what's called the subprocess call. So that's basically using the operating system. So this, is, this would work on Windows, Mac OS, Linux, anywhere you have a PCAP file and you have Python installed. And then you can see here we got the specific fields that we wanted. So frame number to count the frames up and downstream data, data rates, 
MCS, the channel, um, the frame control type, uh, because we wanted to specifically look at data frames, which means you know, from your CWAP studies, you'll know that's uh, data type two. So you can grab that and then your retries. So with that, let's take a quick look at what that, what that looks like. Make that big. All right, so I've got a file already placed. I have a default folder. I'm gonna run this. Basically, it's asking where are your files? Is it, do you wanna change to a different default location? I'm gonna say no, because that's where my file is. It's going to grab the data. All right, so now it's gonna ask me for the MAC address of the access point. And of course, we would know this because you would be deploying these access points yourself. So here you can see um, the first result is all of the downstream data from the access point itself. So you can see there was not a lot of data frames, only about 12, and the aggregate up from, this client, uh, from the clients. And then I put a little filter in here because sometimes when you're collecting data, you get these ancillary clients, you know, they might only transmit a couple frames, you know, maybe five or 10 frames, and you don't want them as part of your analysis. So in here, you can put in the minimum number of frames that the data, uh, the client must have transmitted as a, as a filter, and then it will output all of the individual clients themselves. This example here, there was only one client connected to the AP, but I wanted to show this to give you kind of an example of what it could look like. So what's cool about this is you can get all this data just running over a, P, uh, over a PCAP file. Tonight, you're gonna do the Odroid Maker session. So um, fortunately, because um, the Wi-Fi community is so awesome, was able to reach out to Jerry, and Jerry has put Wireshark on the image for your Odroids. So not only will we be able to do throughput testing with this, but you'll also be able to look at, um, collect captures, and then take that offline. So if I do this real quick, we can, Jerry, uh, We'll see what an Odroid file looks like. All right, so there's Jerry. So here we see the aggregate client, and here you can see now there's there was three clients that were transmitting with this access point uh, from the sample file. So just to go one step further. I always like to say, you know, you know, Six Sigma always used to say, ask why five times. I, strategically, I always like to say, what next five times? So with this, I was very fortunate again to reach out to um, Adrian Granados, who has the Wi-Fi tool, um, packet capture, uh, as part of your, uh, the OSX. Who uses Airtool? Awesome. So. Everyone needs to give a big thanks to Adrian. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and turn on a, um, actually first, in your preferences now for Airtool, in your preferences now for Airtool, I know it's very hard to see. By default, it usually opens with Wireshark. You now have the ability to say launch a script. And you can, <clears throat> Uh, basically, when you're finished capturing, it's going to do exactly that, launch a script. So let's go ahead and capture some data. Hopefully the demo gods will work for me as I'm up here. So we're gonna collect some data, see what you guys are doing out there. All right, so I'm gonna click stop. Now in the air tool, I should be able to make this bigger here, right? There we go. In air tool, you now have the ability to, to point it um, to a script that you saved on your, on your local computer. You also have the ability um, to run a single script or um, if, you uncheck this, if you uncheck this box, you can run a, a separate script and choose one or run the same script over again if you like to do that. So I'm just gonna keep it the way it is. 
say launch. Okay, so now the script is running. And I believe this is what we had for in here earlier today. Okay, didn't get any data frames, but you can see the script still ran. And now you can collect all this data in Airtool directly, run the script, and get the analysis right after you've gone ahead and did your capture. So big thanks to Keith, to Jerry, and to Adrian for all the support. And hopefully you guys will get involved with some scripting, and hopefully we see some really cool things from you guys next year. Thank you. Great.